Well, I'm sorry that Leon Biner is on uh, sick leave this week, but, you know, at the end of the day, do I care? Not really, because in the studio with me, I am so thrilled to have Delta Goodrum. Good, Works out. Uh, good, good timing for uh, us for, to chat. For both of us, fantastic. <laughs> hey, incidentally, if uh, any of uh, our, cl our sales clients are expecting phone calls from sales reps, well, you're in for an easy time because they are all <laughs> in the adjoining studio having a look at this. It's uh, Perfect. Yes, if you're a client, don't worry about a phone call for the time being. I'm not sure what they're doing for work. Just wait till the general manager. <laughs> Here's about this. Delta White, you're in Adelaide, obviously. Second single. It's out today, I think, isn't it? It is. It's out on iTunes today. So it's the, the more the music comes out mm. each step, I sort of feel even more relieved. I'm sort of like, oh, it's out there. Even with the album title coming out this week, I was like, okay, it's sort of, it. it's then not on my shoulders anymore. It's sort of like I give it out there and it's it's gone. Uh, fantastic. Now, how did the, the first single go? It's, it got some a fair bit of airplay, didn't it? It did, yeah. yeah. I got a lot of support. I mean, I you know, I never take anything for granted and don't expect anything when I when I come out with music or I just hope for the best and and um, hope people enjoy it for their lives. And, and that song still, uh, you know, has, has been, many people took it into their homes, which is great. And Hopefully people will get this song too. Dancing with a Broken Heart, it does have some dark overtones and there's been suggestions, <laughs> you know, breakups and all of that reflected in this. So you want to talk about that? Um, talk us through the, the motivation for really. it. Not really. I mean, I'm just saying, yeah, I do, I do. I, um, I, um, I do want to talk about it. I, You know what, it actually was about many things. It wasn't specific to one thing and that's and that's my truth with this song. It was um, about many different relationships in my life that um, that curtain comes down when you really become an adult and realise that not everybody has has the best intentions as you do and um I kind of I guess I'd always been really quite um always looking for the best in everybody and and those in those sort of feelings of I would never do anything you know hopefully wrong by somebody and do the mm. best I could but so I guess this song kind of then started coming about where I was like all right um you've got to pick yourself up I got to get over this stuff and and I was in Mexico and I was sort of looking out and these stars were so bright and I was sitting on this beach it was at night time with a friend and and I was just going, okay, this is the time of my life. Like, look at these stars. They're beautiful. And I sort of, sort of write these little lyrics. And, and then I took it back to L.A. and, and started writing up this song. And, and it was sort of saying, you know, this is the time of my life underneath these stars. I'm dancing but with a broken heart. And I love dancing, let me tell you that. Mm. I love to get music and jump around like a nutcase with my friends in my house, like a true girl in their pyjamas doing that. That's something I really enjoy. It's a real, it's a real hobby. Um, and that's kind of where the song came from. But... Uh, it came from some really big, you know, realizations, I guess. So now that you're you're obviously <laughs> writing songs uh, for this album, uh, you've changed over the years, naturally enough. I mean, everyone does. Uh, there's, there's more to you now. There's more substance. There's more experiences. Are you channeling all of that into the music too? I mean, I'd say at the same time. I mean, we're all from the time we start breathing are having experiences. And and even when I was like 12 years old and I was writing songs, I remember people used to say to even my mum or they'd say they'd say in interviews when I was like 12 years old, they'd say, "Well, what does a 12 year old have?" to say you know I say well I'm still experiencing all these things for the first time and um, I'm learning this so at every moment there's always been great substance of, of that discovery you know of, of wow what is this and what are these emotions and um, but I guess they always it's like a rainbow they just get deeper as you get older and they get more complex as mm. you get older mm. and um, they're not as uh, the dimensions become they, they they become there becomes many more topics to talk about I guess. So writing when you were twelve, just that's very interesting because of course we really saw you. The world, Australia, saw you. Firstly, on Neighbours would have got yes. a, a bit of a, an idea of who Delta is and and yep. perhaps the, the stardom to follow all of that that we've seen over the last few years too. But you were writing before that, and you had an album I, I gather in the bag. I mean, I found this out this morning when I was looking up some details, yeah. and and that's never been released, and I'm fascinated to know why because there must be this other wealth of material sitting somewhere. Oh, I mean, even on this album, there's like a hundred songs that weren't put onto the okay. album. I mean, I'm I'm I am a prolific writer. I write a lot, and um, I I write at all times. I get very excited to write songs. It's very much my my happy place. And um, I get <laughs> just some of them aren't that good. You know, mm. you just wait for the good ones, and then you have a, an album that's got got some good songs in it. <laughs> um, but I I guess like uh, those help when it comes to that. I mean, you're talking about demos and songs when I was like 12 and okay. 13 and 14 and I did release a song when I was like 15 called I Don't Care which um, I, I think peaked at 62 or something so um, but I tell you what that was the most I learned more than I ever did in those moments and it prepared me for having by the time I was 17 my first number one hit
Right, okay. Delta's my guest today, Delta Goodrum. If you'd like to uh, have a chat with Delta, she is very happy to, to hear from you Call as well. Call uh, me! Uh, double double is the number. You're uh, heading off to, to do a little bad performance. I'm my back towards everybody uh, look, in Look, there's about studio. 30 like, people like in the next room. I feel like it's something's behind me. Well, I don't think they <laughs> Maybe mind. Maybe i sort of sit around this way. <laughs> I don't think they care somehow, but anyway. I don't care that my back's No, they're, they're fine with that. I'm sure they're just happy to get a glimpse. Now, oh. Tea Tree Plaza this afternoon, you'll be performing there for, uh, for fans as well. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say something. No. Yes, mind. I know um, what you were going to say too. Yep. Okay, so what were you saying, sorry? Tea Tree Plaza, the Savo. Yes, yes, Tea Tree. TTP. And, and it'll be a chance for people to hear uh, Dancing in the Dark. You'll be uh, dancing, dancing with a broken dark. heart. <laughs> sorry, Dancing with a broken dancing heart. Dancing in the Dark. Who sings that song? Yeah, somebody did back in the um, 80s or 90s. Uh, I thought that was a current. Uh, anyway, Dancing with a Broken Heart. Yes, I'm going to sing a couple of songs um, because that is what I do. Mm. Um uh, so we're going to get up and have a sing and, and chat to people and sign the single and do good old-fashioned in-stores, which I do love to do because I get to see everybody physically enjoying the songs. And that's and that's what I get to do at my shows, you know, when I finally get to, um, you know, go on the road and do, do the shows. Next year we have an arena tour, which is going around the country. And this year we have some album launch shows, which I'm doing on the East Coast, which we just get everybody to know the songs. But... You know, doing live shows and getting to sing for people is is completely the icing on the cake because I can physically see them singing the words back to me, and I go, mm. "Wow, that's really cool. You've you've got to know the song, and it's cool." Yeah, uh, you've um, obviously done some acting, as we said, neighbours and and other shows as well. Mm. Do you miss that at all? Do you want to get back into that, and or is the singing career now, the music career, I mean, just totally taking over? <laughs> acting, I I really enjoy it. Like I really enjoy it. I don't know if I'm that good. But I really enjoy it. So I, 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 do, I did get a Logie, however, one time, um, which was a long time ago, and it was safely my worst speech ever in the history of speaking. So um, I, do, I, I do miss it in the sense that I really do enjoy it as a craft. And people who do it exceptionally well, it's a truly incredible craft to be able to do, to have such subtext behind your, to, behind your eyes and, and to really zone into your own life. I, I equate it to the same as music when you are really connected to what you're saying and, and it's coming through mm. and it's a spiritual thing that happens when people know you're standing in truth and singing you know from a different place rather than you know when it's not connected and, so and that really I is you that. isn't it i mean that is the the real delta in, in the in the music in the songs you write it in and mm. and it's who you are yeah it is it mm. is i um i i reveal everything i think you can I think you can really get to know an artist if you truly like read their lyrics and understand where they're coming from. And I know my fans really do. They do read into all of it and they know me probably better than I know myself at times. Mm. I think that's, I think it's a really incredible craft like that they, they can understand it. The Voice was such a, a massive success uh, this year, obviously on Nine, and, and no doubt that'll uh, be back again with us next year. Yeah, we really we really loved you know doing the show, and, and we all had a great time, and, and it looks really good for next season. Mm, so, um, and Adelaide, we had our what, what I had my girl was from you Adelaide. Did, so indeed. Um, You're catching up with Rachel. My brother's in Adelaide. I hope. To, I mean, we really don't have any time, but she's coming on the road with me um, with my shows coming up. So she'll be mm. she'll be opening up my shows and and hopefully we'll sneak her on during the show and you know I just love it a bit my little sister yeah. little sister she's just such a beautiful inspiring young woman and has a lot ahead of her talking of inspiring you obviously inspired a lot of people what best part of 10 years ago in your battle with cancer mm -hmm. uh, is is that all that over now do you need annual checks I mean what what happens with I think that? you know you always have to you know put your health first it's mm. number one and um, be in touch with your body and and uh, you know, you, I'm always, I've always kind of, you know, your immune system's never really the same and you always got to keep a check on it. But um, I'm really thankful to, to have good health yeah. work today and, um, and be able to hopefully um, relate to people who are going through it or going through different really serious you know, illnesses mm. in their life that I, I don't feel there's a wall between us. Yeah. I feel like I can talk openly and say, you know, what about when you felt this? And, uh, and so, I, so I look at it like it was a gift, but I never want to do it again. Of course. And you're an ambassador, I think, for a teen cancer group, aren't you? I, I've done a lot I, I, mm. and a lot behind closed doors as well. But I, my biggest project at the moment is the King Horn Cancer Centre in Sydney, um, which is just incredible. And that's opening up very, very soon, actually, within within the month. So um, I, I'll be opening up that. I've been a patron of that since it's been seeded, mm. going to people's houses, meeting their private donors. I mean, it's been incredible and they were kind enough to give me a little wing, so that'll be there forever, which is mm. pretty cool.
It's uh, a quarter to 11 now. I understand you have to go soon. You're going to see uh, Trent play for the Bulldogs? I am. I think yeah. my brother's listening now. So, hello, Trenny. <laughs> Playing out Elizabeth <laughs> Always tomorrow. Always embarrassing. I've been embarrassing him since I was kidding. When we when we were at school, um, when I because we got to a co-ed school, I would physically, like, drop my books and he would drop his books when we'd see each other, like, Molly, and I would run after him and try to give him a hug and a kiss and be like, hello, Trenny. He's the only younger time than you, he spoke to me, yeah, yeah, he's younger. younger yeah. The only time he spoke to me, though, this one time was... um. You know when you get like athlete of the of the carnival and, and male athlete of the carnival and female and it can be any age, and the one time it was I you know I got the female and he got the male and he mm. was still standing up in front of the assembly next to me and I was like hey Trent and he's like stop talking to me, so, so he, I'm always embarrassing him. Mm. But there hopefully you go. not. Hopefully. All right, Tea Tree Plaza this afternoon, four p.m. and yes. uh, and then maybe for anyone who catches a glimpse out at the Elizabeth Oval uh, tomorrow perhaps. Uh, been a pleasure oh, yeah. meeting you, Delta. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so and, much for uh, having lovely, me. Lovely, lovely having you in. I uh, hope the uh, the album goes well um, and Child Thank of the you. Universe. And, Thank of course, you. this particular single too. We'll have a quick listen as we go to the break. This is uh, Dancing with a Broken Heart. <laughs> Thank you. Help my friend.